Mikoto offers up a deal and an exclusive online. Here's your look at the McFarlane Toys Spawn Mandarin Spawn Black and White Action Edition, the 2024 Big Bad Toy Store exclusive. The Scarlet Edge was a brutal and peerless warrior from an ancient feudal society. He was a master of combat in all forms until a savage death in a war against the army of the undead. Enraged at his defeat, he returns to Earth to gain his revenge as Mandarin Spawn, where he seeks to do battle and test his skills against the greatest warriors this world can offer. Well, it seems Sheng Lei traded not only his soul, but all the original colors that the figure once possessed. Just before we, though, get a closer look at the Big Bad Toy Store 2024 exclusive of Mandarin Spawn, which just again happens to be a black and white accent edition. Backing that up a bit, I'd like to thank the folks over at McFarland Toys. Yeah, that did provide the sample we could have a look at. It is, again, exclusive to Big Bad Toy Store, and it's got a limited run of 3,010 pieces. That's 3010. As for other numbers, the tape measure is going to tell us that the figure, I don't know if I would count really as spike on the top of his shoulder. That is really, after all, the highest point on the figure. But I'm going to only go really to the top of his head. The accent edition of Mandarin Spawn, in fact, is actually eight and a quarter inches in height, or eight and three quarters of an inch in height. And that translates to a figure that's 21 and a half centimeters tall. I don't. No, I don't have the original Mandarin Spawn. The colors, though, decked out on the original Spawn would have actually had all more gold as opposed to the silver that we're getting treated to here. Because I don't, though, have that Mandarin Spawn, I'm going to slide over the one that we have right now. I'm going to bring in a Spawn that we could use for comparison's sake. I suppose I could have really chosen any Spawn, but for this case, I wanted to choose the Mortal Kombat Spawn, as it does have, again, like more realistic textures, something that the Mandarin Spawn has as well. Two of the four following things were all originally packed with Mandarin Spawn. Anyone want to take any guesses as to what those two things were? No, no, not the figure. The two accessory things that came included with the figure. Yes, it is his blades. Just before we, we look at his blades, though, one thing that isn't part of the original Mandarin Spawn's packaging was the fact the figure came included with his little podium standee. The standee holds, of course, now the card. I love, can I just say this? Am I allowed to say this? I love this card. It does have Mandarin Spawn. It's a little harder to kind of make out just because the font is so small. The font is so red. You can see it does say black and white. Follow my finger. Black and white accent edition. That is a nice looking logo or that's a nice looking design of Mandarin Spawn. It does kind of look like something that I wouldn't expect to see necessarily from Spawn, but I don't know, maybe from a Legend of Zelda game. On the back, though, what you won't get, though, is a read-up. What you'll get instead is Black and White Axe Edition, Certificate of Authenticity. This certifies <clears throat> this certifies that the limited edition worldwide product Mandarin Spawn figure is authentic and officially licensed by McFarlane Toys. The figure was created, developed, and designed by Todd McFarlane and his award-winning design group. All figures and individually hand-painted are also sequentially numbered. The one that was provided here just happens to be P54 of the 3010-3010 release, signed down below by Todd himself. Of course, perched inside that is actually the display stand. The display stand actually does have the Spawn logo on the front. If you like the look of that logo and would love if it was only just bigger, you're in luck. The font is, in fact, bigger on the now rectangular display stand that also comes included with the figure. The original, though, Mandarin Spawn would have had just the regular circular stand. And instead of actually having this all in red, it, the font instead would have been in white. I like that when we get these accent edition figures that they go all out when it comes to display stands. Not that necessarily you need this much of a footprint stand for actual uh, for the Mandarin Spawn, but it's always nice for a, a, certainly a showcase piece to have the stand as big as it is. There's a peg, it's, I don't know if you can actually see, it's just above the point of the W. No, right in the middle, right in the middle of the W. And that can plug into either one of the boots of Mandarin Spawn. Move that out of the way. Yes, the figure earlier mentioned does come included with both his blade weapons. The blade weapons, from what I remember at least of the original Mandarin Spawn, did have the dragon motif, but I think it was still kept to the same silver as the rest of the blade. With this, 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 with this now being, excuse me, with this now being an accent edition, it gives now a chance for the talented artists behind the scenes to paint this now in red. The red is very, very much similar to the red that they're actually using for not only his masks, the accent areas, and his well, I guess would be the dragon armor that he has, and the lower skirting as well. So they, they keep the colors pretty consistent. The blade itself looks good. It's not sharp to the touch. I mean, if it was sharp to the touch, you'd be probably seeing other red, and that would be on my finger. But no, the actual blade does look pretty good. I like the way, actually, when you're looking at it, too, if you see it from the side, you can actually see that there's a dragon mouth that's holding the blade. That's pretty cool. Of course, the handle down below that, the original handle. Now, 
For the first release of Mandarin Spawn, and there's been, I think, subsequent repaints of the figure, I think the first release of this actually had this all done in the kind of gold finish, which again would have then mirrored itself onto the shoulders, the torso, the lower legs. Well, I think the lower legs were actually red, but most of the gold does make quite a lot of appearances on the original Mandarin Spawn. This time around, we get it in black. Not as, uh, not as impressive, I suppose, as actually this blade, too. It's also a lot smaller of a blade than the larger one that we just finished having a look at. Uh, it's also got a little bit of more tarnished look to it. It's got some scratches. It's got some, you know, again, imperfections to it. This looks like a blade that's been used in combat. Again, the handle isn't as exciting. It doesn't certainly have a dragon head to be vomiting out the blade. But uh, it does have, you know, again, a very similar style of handle. This, by the way, can fit into either one of the figure's hands. It can fit, in fact, in both of the figure's hands. But there's no storage space on the back where you can store the blades. I don't think the original figure would have had that, but it would have been nice if they had included like a clip or something that you could have actually taken this and just plugged it on the back of his body. Just a, you know, again, just a hole or just a peg, either one of those, just to accommodate the idea of actually attaching this on the back of the figure's body. It doesn't have that. What it does have, though, as I just move everything now out of the way, is some glorious, glorious paint. The original Mandarin Spawn, again, this would have been an ideal time if the person behind the camera actually had picked up that original Mandarin Spawn. It would have been, well, slide it in so you guys could see the differences between the two. The black would have made somewhat of the same sort of appearance on the original Mandarin Spawn. It's also making appearance here also in the uh, also in the sketch edition, or not the sketch edition, the accent edition. The thing that they, that is different is the actual face. Not that it's molded differently, but the way they approach the paint is different. The original Mandarin Spawn would have had this all in yellow or gold. It now is done here in a, again, a fabulous looking crimson. Not only is it just red, but it's also a metallic red. You can see his eyes. You can see his tusks on the side of his mask. I guess that would be his face, really, but just such an interesting looking head sculpt. Some horns on the sides. While admittingly, though, while it looks so good from the front, it loses something, obviously, here on the back of the figure's body. Uh, all the... All the original detailing on the figure. Now, I think the original Mandarin Spawn would have also had very much a void landscape of missing paint. It has just a little bit here in the middle area of its spine, but all the rest of it is kind of just kind of relegated to the black. There's a few little markings there on the back of its body, but for the most part, where it shows the most is obviously from the front of its body. So the mask looks fantastic. Getting, though, a closer look at his torso, it looks somewhat similar to maybe like a dragon's head. Uh, as you can see, the top of its teeth, large very large red eyes there that look fantastic. The original one would have had these all in green. Uh, so the, the actual dragon mask, for example, on the front of his torso, this would have all been here in gold, and then the eyes themselves would have been done in green. They flipped the switch instead by doing this all now in silver, and now you got these glorious, again, I keep going back to saying that again, these ruby red eyes. Boy, those stand out so much nicer on, than the original Spawn. He's got these side, these very large looking shoulder pad spikes. This isn't as as hard of a plastic as I was expecting. I was really thinking this would be a, a more hard, kind of harder to bend plastic. But as you can see, it's got a little bit of a rubber give to it. Probably the reasonings why they did that is, I don't know if kids are going to be running around with mandarin spawns in their hands. Mommy, mommy, look! And then just, you know, happen to fall with the getting impaled in the eye. They probably did this for safety more than anything else. Obviously, it's jeopardizing. It doesn't jeopardize necessarily that this would be breaking if you happen to, you know, if it falls on itself, for example. It's got a smaller shoulder pad here on the side, too. Some nice dis additional texturing is also added there. You got some scroll work on the side as well. You can see that there's also these little kind of faces. You can see there's face markings there on the shoulders. It's just, there's a lot to really take in when it comes to this figure. He's got the front skirting here. Now, the skirting is. Kind of a, very much the same kind of soft plastic as this, but there is not much give to it. Looking at it, though, it kind of looks almost like, I don't want to say it looks like carpeting, but if you look at the texturing to it, it kind of looks like a very thin Berber carpet. Of course, you've got the dragon motif there featured on the front as well. If we just lift up and look underneath the hood, you can see as well there's faces there for his kneecaps. The faces are different from one another. They don't have any additional paint other than really where they've painted the eyes and where they've painted the teeth. But again... Just done here in silver, I think, makes it look so much nicer. The original Mandarin Spawn would have had these in gold down below. The original Mandarin would have also had these in red. All doing it in silver really does, I feel, take a, give a chance to this mold for really a chance to shine. Again, for the articulation on this guy, if you had the original Mandarin Spawn, you pretty much know the territory that we're about to cover. 
The head is about the only thing that's a little bit more limited. Uh, you can rotate it back and forth, but if you look at the back of the collar, he has this first already to contend with. No, not to mention as well, he's got all these additional spikes on the back of his head. So when it comes to moving his head back and forth, rotating it this way isn't so much the issue. Trying to move it up and down, though, is the greater issue. That's as much movement as it can actually possess. For its arms, he does come out at about that far. The shoulder pads, for obvious reasons, are going to get in the way of things. You can take the arms and rotate them all the way around. You can take them and rotate them all the way around. The figure does have no swivel in his bicep, but he does possess at least a swivel in his forearm. There's a single hinge only in his elbow. The problem with it, though, is if you look at the way they've sculpted, this part of his armor right here makes then an almost difficult task to actually bend his arm any bit further than that. You can even just, even if you bring it out, you might be able to bring it in just a little bit more. But if you want to have it front and center, that's as far forward as you can actually bend the arm. Hands rotate all the way around. There's also a hinge back and forth there as well. The upper torso, despite thinking that all of this would be robbed by the sculpting, in fact, gets rewarded. There's all this additional movement there on the top of his torso. He has a secondary torso ball joint just down below here above the belt. The legs do split out. You can take him moving forward, moving back. Obviously, the skirting on the front is going to kind of impede some of that. There's a swivel there at the top of the thigh, a double hinge on the knee, which is nice to see. And then there's also the articulation here down below in his boots, or the equivalent of his boots. You can move them kind of up and down, more so back and forth, and there's a little bit of a rocking motion there as well. Nice, nice looking figure. So nice, in fact, of a figure that I... I can't even imagine why I would have passed on getting the original Mandarin spawn in the first place. He's a fairly inexpensive figure too, so if you want to get your hands on the original gold and red version of Mandarin spawn, a lot of times you could probably find it online for, I don't know, I would say 20 to $30, probably a little bit more closer to 20 than it is closer to 30 This one, again, being a Big Bad Toy Store 2024 exclusive, means that if you guys are interested, not to startle you guys with my fingers, means that if you guys are interested and want to get this one for yourself, it is a BBTS exclusive for 2024. Limited at 3010 or 3,010 3, pieces worldwide. That's going to be a number that's probably going to dwindle quite fast. So if you guys are interested and a big fan of Mandarin Spawn's design, this is a figure you might want to pick up before he goes away. I know when we tend to think of gold and silver that we think right away that gold is first place and silver a second. Perhaps let me just entertain the idea this time that the Black and White Accent Edition takes the initial concept of Mandarin Spawn and gives a chance for the mold to shine. Full disclosure, though, that the Mandarin Spawn not only has changed things in cosmetic releases, but the figure itself has also had some mold changes, too. Things like its mask, for example, his shoulder pads, and even the weapons that he wields, it's quite a rabbit hole if you ever want to go down and start to collect Mandarin Spawns. It's not just always the case that you're getting the exact same mold every single time. But no, there's a couple of variations to that. It's ones that I would certainly be entertained based at least on how much I'm liking this mold that I would like to get more of these. But again, I know that that's going to be quite an expensive feat to start to collect. This one, though, takes, if I was to go apples to apples to the original gold version of Mandarin Spawn, which I think this one is the closest one resembling, I think the silver works a whole lot nicer. Things like his kneecap faces, things like the dragon face on the front of his torso, I think look better in the silver than it did in the gold. The face sculpt now doing this all in crimson red gives a kind of more of a demonic look to Mandarin Spawn. And again, it takes the mold that I had initially honestly passed on and makes me more intrigued about wanting to go down and collect more of them. Uh, again, this one is though as an exclusive as Big Bad Toy Store is available or has this available, but it's only available for 3,010 pieces. So if you guys are interested and would like to get this version of Mandarin Spawn, it is, like I said, available over on their site exclusively. Big thank you once again to the folks over at McFarlane Toys that did provide this sample of the gold label collection Spawn, Mandarin Spawn, Black and White, Accent Edition. Have you guys been collecting Mandarin Spawns? Let me know down below in the comments section. Again, I know it's not just always cosmetic changes. Mandarin Spawn has had different shoulder pads. He's had different masks. I think most of his torso has remained somewhat the same, but there's a whole lot of different changes that they've made to the character that it isn't just a case that you pick up one Mandarin Spawn. It, it, it's like Pringles. You, you have one, you got to have more. I personally don't like Pringles myself. I think Pringles are like one of the worst chips around, but you, you never can really have one. I can have actually less than one. I don't even eat them at all. But again, if you guys have been collecting Mandarin Spawns, let me know down below in the comments section which ones that you have in your collection. And in the meantime, if you guys did enjoy this video, want to throw it a like. If you guys are loving the content you guys are seeing and would like to stick around for more, two-step process. You can hit the subscribe. You can turn on the bell. And I guess the third one, make sure you're coming back on a regular basis. As always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.